You can see Barcelona playing like a well-oiled machine. Jokingly, it's said that coach Hansi Flick could fall asleep and the team would still win. Yet, the members are dissatisfied with President Laporta. Who would have thought that amidst the club's renaissance, members would rise up against the president? This could only happen in Barcelona, even as the team waves its victory flag on the pitch. However, the undercurrents of discontent from the members cannot be ignored, as they are increasingly gathering to prepare for the elections in two years. Perhaps Laporta has not considered that he has to manage the team while facing internal battles. Meanwhile, Barcelona is protecting Lamine Yamal like a national treasure. At just 17, he has become the club's most cherished player. After exerting himself for 90 minutes against Denmark, Barcelona quickly expressed concern, like a mother worrying for her child, wanting to send Yamal back to rest. Indeed, losing Yamal at this time is like playing chess without a key piece. If you wonder whether Vinicius Jr. winning the Ballon d'Or will spark controversy, the answer is clear. Ederson, the goalkeeper for Brazil, has openly supported Vinicius instead of his Manchester City teammate, Rodri. Ederson might just want to boost the morale of his fellow countrymen, but Manchester City fans don't see it that way. In the end, Tony Cruz has decided to pursue coaching. It sounds like a joke, but it's not. Cruz has signed up for a coaching course despite previously stating that he hadn't thought about becoming a coach. But who knows, he might change his mind later, especially since he has established his own football academy. Despite Barcelona's strong revival, the wave of discontent against President Laporta continues to grow. Under coach Hansi Flick, the team plays impressively, but that's not enough to quell the dissatisfaction from a large segment of the members. Key figures are preparing for the elections in two years. The main reason for this wave of dissent stems from Laporta's handling of Barcelona's finances, which have been troubled since the time of Josep Maria Bartomeu. Although Laporta has used financial leverage to make big transfer deals, many are concerned that this is merely a short-term solution that puts the club at long-term risk, especially with the need to comply with financial fair play regulations. Victor Font, Laporta's main rival in the 2021 elections is one of the strongest opponents. Font has built his strength by attracting support from those dissatisfied with Laporta's management. He believes Barcelona needs a long-term, sustainable development project rather than the current lack of calculation in decisions. Not only Victor Font, but also Joan Camprubi, continuing the family tradition, is drawing attention. He is the leader of the Samun Clam campaign quietly rallying forces and is considered a strong candidate for the upcoming election. Additionally, there is Mark Shiria, an economist who, although he has not officially announced his candidacy, is also a noteworthy figure with financial solutions to help Barcelona out of crisis. A newly emerged organization, Suma Barça, is also gaining influence. Furthermore, Jordi Farré, who previously organized the no-confidence vote against Bartomeu, also intends to take similar action against Laporta. Faré has strongly criticized Laporta for failing to address the club's financial difficulties. Despite the rising opposition, Laporta remains confident in his strategy. He hopes for the team's success on the field and believes that if Barcelona can return to the top of Europe, he can thwart the efforts of opposing groups. Before the match against Denmark, Barcelona closely monitored Lamine Yamal's fitness as he had been playing intensively since the start of the season. In that match, although he did not score, the 17-year-old created a great chance and had four shots on goal. However, Barcelona's concern is not only focused on the player's performance, but also on the fact that he played the full 90 minutes, raising fears of potential injury risks. According to information from Diario Sport, Right after the match, Barcelona requested the Spanish Football Federation to allow Yamal to return to the club to avoid him playing further during this training camp. The Catalan team does not want their young star to participate in Spain's next match against Serbia. This move reflects maximum protection for Yamal, who is currently one of the most crucial factors in Barca's attack. Lamine Yamal has had an impressive season with five goals and five assists in all competitions, alongside Rafinha and Robert Lewandowski in Flick's attacking system. Losing Yamal at this point 
could severely impact Barcelona's ambitions, especially with the season entering a critical phase with major objectives in both La Liga and the Champions League. According to the medical team, after a health check in the morning, Lamine Yamal's condition is not too serious. Doctors confirmed that he does not have a specific injury but is simply suffering from muscle overload due to high-intensity play. Thus, the Spanish Football Federation has agreed to let the player return to Barcelona immediately for rest and recovery. Additionally, journalist Javier Miguel indicated that Yamal's chances of playing in the match against Sevilla remain uncertain. This is a precautionary decision to ensure he does not face any serious issues in the future. In the context of the upcoming 2024 Ballon d'Or ceremony, the competition between two candidates, Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr. and Manchester City's Rodri is heating up. Both players have had excellent seasons with significant achievements at both club and national levels. However, Manchester City's goalkeeper Ederson has sparked controversy by openly expressing support for Vinicius, his fellow Brazilian, instead of his Man City teammate, Rodri. In an interview with TNT Sport Brazil, Ederson did not hesitate to voice his opinion. I support Vinicius. He deserves all the accolades for what he did last season. I'm not sure how the voting works, but if it's about titles, goals, and assists, I think Vinny deserves recognition for what he did in the Champions League and everything he contributed last season. Vinicius Jr. had a memorable season with 24 goals and 11 assists in 39 matches across all competitions, helping Real Madrid win three titles, including La Liga and the Champions League. In the Champions League final against Borussia Dortmund, Vinicius scored the second goal, sealing the victory for Los Blancos. With that impressive form, Vinicius is currently a top contender for the Ballon d'Or, and Ederson has not hidden his support. I support Vinicius, as well as Rodri. Whoever wins deserves it, but I think Vinny deserves it for what he did. However, if Rodri wins, I'll also be happy, although Rodri also had an excellent season, being a key player in helping Man City win the Premier League and Club World Cup and leading Spain to victory in Euro 2024. Ederson's remarks have inevitably upset Manchester City fans. Many fans expressed disappointment that Ederson chose to put his faith in Vinicius, rather than someone who played a significant role in the team's titles last season. Tony Cruz is entering a new chapter in his career as he prepares to obtain his UEFA B coaching license. While it is unclear whether the former German midfielder will pursue a professional coaching career, he has signed up for this course with the support of Real Madrid, a move that shows his readiness for any future opportunities. This is the first step in his journey to becoming a coach, and Cruz will have the chance to continue advancing his qualifications toward higher levels like UEFA A and UEFA Pro. The UEFA B course is organized for players who have played professionally for at least seven years, allowing them to participate directly without needing a prior UEFA C license. Tony Kroos has been with Real Madrid for over 10 years and will conduct most of the course online as well as attend some practical sessions at the Valdebebas Training Center, where he is already very familiar. Although Tony Cruz is on his way to completing the UEFA B license, he has yet to make any official announcements about pursuing a coaching career. Back in August, Cruz mentioned that one of the reasons he retired was that he felt somewhat tired of traveling and living in hotels. If I become a coach, I'll return to that lifestyle and you have to travel a lot, so that's not my main idea. However, you should never say never. A significant advantage that Tony Cruz has is that he has established his own football academy, the Tony Cruz Academy, which currently has 16 teams ranging from ages four to 15. Instead of interning in the youth training system to obtain a UEFA A license like Raul, Xabi Alonso, or Michel, Real Madrid will still fully support their legends, even though the path to leading a professional team is still far off. Tony Kroos's journey is beginning, and time will tell whether he will become a successful coach. Sometimes it seems fun to be a coach, and then you change your mind. Who knows?